So yesterday we talked about the Champ U Barbecue, OU's premier recruiting event, but today we need to talk about the Crimson Tide's loaded weekend because though the Crimson Tide haven't yet had their massive recruiting event that comes this weekend, something we will absolutely be previewing when the date gets closer, the Crimson Tide had a mini run at their massive weekend this past weekend, which was loaded with top recruits, and we have got to break it all down. But before we do, as always, y'all know the drill. I want to hear from y'all, so hop down in the comments. Give me a Y for yes or an N for no. And given that Alabama's massive recruiting weekend is finally upon us, are you excited that this weekend is here and what will come? Let me know what you're thinking there. Let me know which prospects you're most excited to get on campus. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification, because I do constant college football content and you don't want to miss any of it. And if you enjoy that content, be sure to like, comment down below. Those interactions are massive to content creators such as myself. But with all that being said, let's kick this off talking about Bryce Anderson. Because after Bryce Anderson's visit, I spoke to Bryce Anderson's father and he told me that they had a really, really good time. He said Tuscaloosa is a special place. Now, this is going to be a really, really entertaining battle to watch. Bryce Anderson, one of the most coveted prospects in all of the nation out of Texas. But even after the Alabama visit, I would have to say I think Texas is in the lead. Texas has done a phenomenal job for quite some time of very seriously recruiting Bryce Anderson. He's a Texas kid, and so it just kind of makes sense. They have been on the Bryce Anderson case for as long as you could have been, really. A&M is another team to watch on this, but right now, Texas has done such a good job. Now, understand, this is Saban. Sky's the limit here with what Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide can do as far as recruiting is concerned, but Texas has done a really, really good job with Bryce Anderson. The next name I want to talk about is a name that I want people to keep in mind, and that is Earl Little Jr. Earl Little Jr. is someone who, on this channel, I've talked about the Crimson Tide staff love. This is a phenomenally talented kid. And the thing that makes Earl Little Jr. so special is the fact that he has so much versatility. You can put him at multiple different positions in the defensive secondary, coming out of American Heritage, the same high school that Pat Sertan came out of. Earl Little Jr. is an incredibly talented prospect, and the Tide would love nothing more than to get him on campus as a permanent fixture in this recruiting class, and good news for the Tide fans, because even though a commitment didn't come down, from what I've been told from people around the program, both parties were already high on each other going into this weekend, meaning that Saban and staff in the Alabama Crimson Tide loved Earl Little Jr. Earl Little Jr. and company had a really good opinion of Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. But exiting the weekend, I think both parties were more assured and entrenched in their positions. I think Saban and them, after seeing him worked out, or at least from what I was told after they saw him worked out, they were even more sure that this kid is special. This kid is really, really special. And from what I've heard, Earl really enjoyed his time at Alabama, which is going to be awesome for the Crimson Tide. Saban will be working overtime for this one. Make no mistake about it. This kid is a really important prospect to the class. And I think the word we need to remember when we're talking about Earl Little Jr. is versatility because he has it in troves. And that's something Saban would love nothing more than to add in to this secondary for the future because he could sure up a few different positions for the Crimson Tide moving forward. The big name cornerback who is on campus from California, Damani Jackson, five-star defensive back, enjoyed his time at the Crimson Tide. Damani Jackson, California kid, going to Matter Day, the old high school of Bryce Young, is a really talented prospect, but he's a California kid, like I said, and USC has done a phenomenal job of recruiting this cycle and last. Now, if you did watch that Champ U Barbecue recap, the same argument I gave for Gentry Williams and OU's battle with USC for Gentry Williams is the same argument I will give here for Damani Jackson. Damani Jackson, California kid, whereas Gentry Williams isn't, so USC does have that going for them. But the argument is that the USC Trojans are in a precarious situation. They're recruiting really well right now, but the results have to be shown on the field. And if you're asking me which team is in a better position to show that results are here and can be attained right now, Alabama or USC, well, that's not even a question. That question is answered. That's the Alabama Crimson Tide. And if you're looking at development, specifically at the defensive back position, Nick Saban is king of that. The USC Trojans have a phenomenal recruiter at the DB position and a phenomenal DB coach in Williams. But still, Nick Saban is king. So this is a battle that though I think USC is still very much on the lead for, they still have his commitment, Nick Saban and staff will be working very tirelessly to try and flip this commitment. This is going to be a really interesting one to see if the staff can get it done. Now make no mistake, I'm not saying that I think USC recruitment is going to fall off. I think they're recruiting very, very well. And they're trying to rebuild that program, which would be great for college football and great for the pack. 
but Alabama is in a unique position given the, the run they've been on. The Crimson Tide are phenomenally talented. They still have Nick Saban. And if you're asking me which team is in a better position for success day one next year, well, that answers the Alabama Crimson Tide. I don't have to think much about it. I'm excited for USC. Love what they're doing recruiting-wise. But this is Nick Saban in Alabama. I don't know that they can flip Demonte Jackson, but that's why I say this is going to be a phenomenally entertaining battle for us to watch going forward for a phenomenally talented player. The news everyone is probably wondering about is Shamar James. Now, Shamar James seemed like he was going to be an Alabama lean, and then this weekend commits to the University of Florida. Now, here's what I will say. Florida has done a phenomenal job with their visits. In fact, a few weeks ago, we saw Walter Nolan tweet out that he was pretty much well done with his process coming out of that visit from Florida. Florida. His father, you know, apparently talked to him and said, hey, we should probably take all of our visits, make sure that this is the right thing, and that's the process that they will be achieving. But that wasn't the only person we heard talking very highly about Florida. In fact, Gentry Williams took a visit to Florida. Florida, the only school pursuing him as a wide receiver, but talks were had about him playing DB as well. The Florida Gators are recruiting very, very well right now, but this is also a player that Nick Saban and them will be working overtime to try and flip from Florida. Just because he is committed does not mean that the pitch will stop. Recruiting is going to be awesome this year. I think we all need to keep in mind what the past year has brought us and the effects that that's having on these kids, which is why I think so many of these kids are trying to take every single official visit before they ultimately make their decision, and that's what we're seeing right now. Why so many institutions, not just Alabama, are putting in these great weekends and not necessarily getting the commitments that they may have in the past, simply because these kids haven't gotten to visit places, they haven't gotten to do things like this, and they're taking their time, making sure they're making the right decisions, which in the long run, I think we all should have no problem with. That just seems to be the smart thing to do. Hop down to the comments, let me know what you're thinking, let me know which prospects you were excited to get on campus this weekend, and which prospects you're excited to get on campus this coming weekend. That's it. See ya.